Happy New Year everyone. I uh, hope you are keeping well and safe and you've had uh, a good um, Christmas for those who celebrate Christmas. Even if you don't, nice time off and hopefully you've got lots of hobby in there. So uh, I've had a bit of a break from recording for a while, uh, family time etc over the holidays and um, yeah that's it. I haven't been lax though, have painted uh, every now and again while I can and of course I have been updating my Goliath. So in this video I'll be showing you uh, what I've been doing recently with my gang, what I hope to achieve, uh, a little bit of terrain building and of course that is for Necromunda. It would apply for any miniatures games of a sci-fi apocalyptic nature but for me personally it will be for Necromunda. Um, it's a nod to Soul Vince, for those who know Soul Vince of course has uh, a YouTube channel and an Instagram account. Uh, I follow a lot of his work on Instagram and it's fantastic, it really is. And it really makes his hive come alive. And hey, that rhymes, right? So it's gotta be true. Uh, so he's done some really fantastic work making Zone Mortalis look more realistic. So rather than very basic blocks, it's uh, a bit more convoluted, as in it's got more pipes and more cabling and things like that that make it look more like it would actually work. So when you've got your computer consoles and there's actually power conduits hanging off of it and things like that, uh, definitely looks more realistic than just sticking a box in there with a monitor. How is it going to get its power? So yeah, fantastic work. I'll put in there a link in the description below. And uh, yeah, I will show you my take on a nod to what he does. I suppose I should talk about New Year's resolutions. So last year, stupidly, I did say that, uh, <laughs> um, I think I might have made it to the end of January when I said I'm not going to buy any miniatures this year. That was a stupid, stupid thing for me to say. It's not because I didn't want to do any hobbying. I have got buckloads of hobbying to do. So as you can see, I've still got my second edition 40k box that I haven't even attempted the orcs from. So yeah, that was way in the 90s. Uh, I've still got probably five, 6,000 points of orcs that I've never painted. I do have all the additions of Gaz painted up and a, a few other bosses and things like that. And I've definitely assembled lots of vehicles because I really love the conversion on orc vehicles. But it was really unrealistic for me to say that I'm not gonna buy any more models for last year because I wanted to catch up. Because uh, I know I bought a massive batch of 40k and uh, Necromunda terrain at the beginning of last year. Uh, I think it might have been just the other side of Christmas. So I might have got away with that one. And does terrain count as miniatures? I'm not sure. Um, but I had a couple of trips to Warhammer World and you can not, not buy anything when you go up there. And of course I always get distracted. Um, I got into Moonstone, a game I played back in 2019. Uh, I like the law and everything, and I love the miniatures, but I swore I wasn't going to get into the game. Uh, I'm not very lucky with cards for some reason, and it's a card more than a dice-based game. Of course, I played it again recently at our local gaming club. Marcus uh, is heavily into it, one of the local guys that have been on the channel. And I know about five or six people locally that play Moonstone. And I was like, oh, go on then, it's a low model count, but actually for once, it is a low model count until I backed the Kickstarter this year. That's coming out in May. So I've got definitely a lot of miniatures coming out. Um, so this year, I'm gonna say, I am going up to Warhammer World in January for a double birthday. But maybe every other month buy something, possibly. But I really, really am. New Year's resolution, not buy any miniatures. That's not what I'm gonna say, because that's ridiculous and I might die. Um, I am going to say stop hobbying butterflying and really concentrate on a project and work all its way through it. Uh, small steps at a time, i.e. if it's on my painting desk, finish it before bringing someone else on the painting desk. That's difficult for me, personally. But I really want to hear your New Year's resolutions. Um, yes, a lot of people say they want to lose weight, they want to eat healthier, things like that. But ideally, hobby-wise, what army have you had up in the attic for years and really, really wanted the paint? What piece of the terrain 
Um, did you have a little bit of a funk on and you've had a bit of a pause on? Get back to it maybe and let me know how you're getting on. Really want to hear. Uh, and if there's any projects that you guys are working on, uh, be it miniatures, terrain, uh, how even converting your man room or building a, a desk or a gaming table of any kind, would love to see your progress and if you want to put it on our Facebook page, that's House of Chaos Community for those who don't know. Um, and I'll put a, obviously a link in the description below as I always do for that. Uh, would really, really like to see it. I'm not just saying that. We would. It's great. So here's getting to the hobby desk. Okay, so as my Goliath gang increases in power, uh, at the moment I am currently on the standings uh, top for the amount of kills, uh, top for credits, top for reputation, and most number of models in my gang in our current campaign. So, um, <laughs> massive target painted on my back, and recently I spent my credits on just a regular ganger with a combat shotgun, giving it the Infernus ammo, so basically a walking around with a heavy flamer, and I gave him the uh, <laughs> the monkey wrench as well, the Stilsons, because it's got knockback basically, not because I think it's a massively powerful weapon, but for the cost, I think it's about 15 credits. Knocking models back is pretty fun, because if they get knocked back, they can't hit you back, unless they've got a decent uh, range weapon, so pick your fight, so if they've got a versatile weapon, for example range 3, they could definitely still smack me. Um, but yeah, pretty happy with this guy, um, some hazard stripes, weathered him up a little bit, some manky stuff on the base, and a colourful mohawk. Uh, next, I haven't finished painting these guys, I've only done the two base colours, so just the skin and just the orange with an airbrush and then I start putting all the details in. So like this guy, I'll then start putting all the black leather because they like to be a bit kinky and the fluorescent colours weather them up. So I do like the contrast between the dark of like the, the grubbiness and the black leather and nice vibrant oranges, I think it really pops. So these are uh, just conversions at the moment. So I'll start off with this guy here. Uh, because my guys are now outlaws, I'm starting to buy weapons on the black market. Um, I mean, this one here is just a hey, just a Vansar multi-motor, you know. Slight bit of conversion, so cut the arm off and the shoulder pad, put it on there on a casual kind of stance. And I had, I think it was Puppets of War or something, I've had this piece for ages, that robotic hand. I just thought it looked kind of cool. I needed a hand. And I've had one before smoking a cigar, and that looks great. One that's pointing, which you know also looks quite menacing for a Goliath. But the um, the bionic hand looks pretty cool, I think. Um, so I had lots of credits spare, so I, I bought that guy. I was getting about 400 credits ish uh, per game because when models die, I have the corpse farm, so I get d6 times 10 credits for that. I'm winning a game, so I'm getting a fair few number of credits. Uh, I've got a fixer in my gang, which is pretty nice. And because I'm an outlaw and I also have the workshop, I also get credits as well. I did have the ammo jack, but oh, as soon as you become an outlaw, the ammo jack's gone. But credits for days. The only issue is you keep buying cool models, you keep trying stuff out, brilliant. But I've only lost one guy. And my gang is getting too big now. Really, I would like to play with only like 10 models, because then they get all the XP and level up and getting cool stuff. But at the moment it seems to be, I've got too big a gang, and that sounds like first world problems, and they're all getting kind of dribs and drabs of XP I really want. For example, Vasquez with a Storm Welder, really want her to level up, um, because she's got some serious potential. But that could end at any moment when she runs out of ammo and a gun blows up in her hand. But uh, this guy I'm pretty proud of. So I've got the Goliath rivet cannon piece in there. And this was from an orc weapon. Uh, I think maybe Runt Herder or something. Uh, basically, I'm trying to make it look like um, the uh, Black Market's got a really nasty close combat weapon. I'm really tired of my Goliath not making it into combat. Um, so... 
this particular weapon has a crazy range on it. So I'm going to totally butcher the name, I know I am, but uh, it's not massively cheap. But this is the, it's, it's a death arc, but it's like Zen arc, death arc, or something. Um, so it's a long range close combat weapon, basically. It's the only versatile weapon I've got in my gang. Uh, so when your Goliath is only speed 4 and they want to get in close combat, why deny them people? So a range 5 close combat weapon is pretty nice, so the minimum I'm going to roll on a charge is 1, so this is at least a 10 inch reach weapon. Uh, currently, obviously when he starts levelling up, I haven't played this model yet, so this totally might go horribly wrong. Uh, I get plus 1 to hit as well, so his uh, weapon skill essentially is twos to hit um, and it's only strength three it's only one damage but this 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 weapon is pretty cool because um, it's rapid fire two so you're running in let's say you're running in with three attacks on the charge four attacks maybe and you are basically needing twos to hit, but you roll the rapid fire dice, and then you hit that many times per hit. If that makes sense, so four hits, all of them go through. And then you roll the rapid fire dice per hit, so you could get lots and lots and lots of attacks with it. Um, but only strength three. You're wounding most average gangers on fours, and it's only one damage and has no AP. So you're heavily armored Van Tarn aren't going to get wiped out by this, but it has got shock, so any sixes on the hit will auto wound as well, which is always nice, um, but it does require an ammo check of two up, but it is plentiful, so it's just something I'm going to play with, I think um, it's just fun purely because I could have um, a decent charge for once, normally I've got my four inch charge I end up moving five inches and not getting into combat. And Goliath really, really want to get into combat. So that's just something I've been dealing with. First world problems, struggling. And he's just got a stub pistol. So once it's all painted up, hopefully that will look quite nice. Next, I'm kind of proud of this thing. So this is my carotid. So my carotid, um, basically supposed to give a gang luck. It is a armoured cherub, so a munitions cherub, making it a little bit scaly, a little bit pox ridden, giving him some green stuff ears. Normally has an iron halo, so I cut the iron halo off, and I cut his feathered wings off, and I had some bat wings from, I think it was uh, um, a Pathfinder miniature of a tiny little bat, so I cut the wings off and just glued it on the back. Uh, I like the idea it's carrying around ammo because my gang is notoriously pants at ammo checks. Um, most of my weapons are a five or a six on the ammo check. So something like heavy bolters, regular bolters, things like that, I really do struggle with. But when you're packing out quite a punch and then you run out of ammo, just run up someone and biff them in the face, right? But yeah, it's pretty tough with this guy. Um, fluff wise, these guys kind of creep me out, but if it's good, uh, good enough for Lord Helmar, it's good enough for me. Next thing is, once again, not painted. Like I said, my New Year's resolution is to concentrate on one thing at once. Do not butterfly. Yes, it's Necromunda, but one model at once. Or at least a unit. Rip for a unit in no time. With my Goliaths, I generally paint them one at a time. Because as the campaign grows and models... I added, I normally paint the models up as I'm adding them. So this one here, uh, the basic shape of it is a converted orc buggy uh, by Ian Henderson. He's uh, converted this, said it would have liked some bits. And I have slightly modified it myself. Um, but I just think it's cool because the gear stick mainly, the fact that it's a skull. Um, I'm going to use it for troop transport in the Ash Wastes, because currently I've got just two Maulers. Haven't yet played a game of Ash Wastes yet in our campaign, but it's on the table. 
and I've been modifying it slightly. So things like obviously making that orc into a goliath. The orc's head is normally pretty much on its chest, so I cut it all off. Green stuff, some moobs back on it, stuck a head on. Um, the row cage will no longer fit, and the bar across is right in his eyesight. So I've turned these two holes here, which are supposed to be plugging in for the row cage, into bolts, just regular bolts. Uh, so it shows it was once part of the time an orc buggy, which as we know, there are probably a few on Necromunda. But, conversion wise, do I get rid of this squig on the stick? because I think it looks good just as a snack and swap it out for them. I have some bottles from uh, Green Stuff World and I was thinking I could one that looks shaped like a, very much like a Jack Daniels bottle have him holding a Jack Daniels bottle not that I encourage drink driving but I think Goliaths probably would because they're dumb um, so yes flatbed so I can put lots of models on most Goliaths have big bases so it's difficult to get that many models on. For example, standard size base for a Goliath. I can get two models on and that's about it. Um, I mean I could get possibly a prospect on there. So like uh, Vasquez is a Forgeborn, so you can get on there fairly easy. But generally speaking you need a big old vehicle to get more than two Goliaths on the back of it. So um, I do have the Rock Grinder for the Gene Steeler Cult. And the bed is quite big, but once again, you can get really more than two Goliaths on the back of it. So Ian converted up the, the main base of the vehicle. And then what I was thinking was, add a magnet, sink a magnet into there. So if I really wanted to, I could put a weapon on the back. So this very large, orky looking gun would be awesome to be on the back of it. And then maybe convert this frame to stick there. And I'll just pop a magnet in if I want to. Um, so then I can swap it out so I can have some weapons on the vehicle instead of just uh, keeping it as a truck. But keeping the cost down would be pretty sweet. Um, I might have to stick some kind of bolter or something on the front or some kind of plow. Um, because might need something more than just a heavy weapon. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just messing around with it at the moment, basically. So that's where I am with miniatures wise. Uh, terrain, well, I have released a video recently on how I made, I've got copious amounts of doors for Necromunda and I'm turning them into door walls. Um, so doors that are no longer in use and have been blown to bits. So here's another one I've been working on. Drilled a few holes and to make it look a bit more melted, I got my trusty lighter in a van ventilated area. Just heated it up slightly so a bit more of a heat pattern to it. And I'll paint that up because I want the doors to be look like they're in optimal, so they're not going to be used. But um, also you can see through them, so you can take the occasional pot shot and stuff like that. Um, if a door is completely out of use, maybe I could smash it up a little bit and put it at a skew angle. Uh, but I have learnt cutting the actual seam of the door is very difficult on these. Because it's a fair old chunk of plastic. Just when you think you've gone all the way through and you want to keep the detail, you've got to cut just that little bit more <laughs> every time. So, messing around with this. Um, I have lots and lots and lots and lots of Necromunda terrain which I love, and if you watched any of my videos on Necromantic Terrain, you know I like to keep them modular. So lots of these, and I know you can magnetize them and put magnets in those hose and swap them out. There's a few little bits that I want to add to, which brings me to the Soul Vince inspired bookcase. So basically how I'm going to start is, I could just cut this square out, which would be super super easy and make a square bookcase in there. Wouldn't look very grimdark-esque, because um, I do like the arch there. So what I'm going to do is make several light incisions inside the arch there, and cut that piece out first. Um, 
So basically, get a decent knife and just gently, this should be great on camera, start doing this. You don't have to put too much effort in because the more effort you put in, the more you are likely to slip and go over a line or lose a finger. So I'm going to do this for about 10 minutes and hopefully this will go through. Remember to keep this piece here. So if you need to cut anything out in future, obviously you could drill it out, that's not a problem. But I really want to keep this piece. And rule number one, never chuck anything away. So I'm going to keep doing this, try not to slip and lose some fingers. So I'd best do it off camera, I think. Voila! We have cut out this section here, just like so. And all my fingers are intact. Um, always get an adult to help you if you're unsure about cutting into any plastic or anything miniature related. Um, so yeah, um, if you slip a little bit, it doesn't matter because on the plastic you'll see there's a few little chips and dinks like that. Anyway, it's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be a bit weathered and why not? Um, these little bits are great for adding a little bit of level of detail onto your pillows from Zoe Mortalis. Uh, you can add loads of things inside there. So today I'm doing books because my Goliath are quite edumacated. Um, but now you can add anything you want. Think stained glass window, that'd be pretty good. So if you had some coloured plastics, you could make a little stained glass window, a little mosaic. If you have a piece of clear plastic, and then you can draw on there with one of those makeup pens to give it a little bit of a, like a, a lead flashing all the way around your glass panels, and then drop some uh, semi-clear or maybe even contrast paint onto the, the clear plastic to give it a cathedral-like glass window. You know, you could have... Um, all I can think of right now is Blood Angels related, so nice picture of Sanguinius. Maybe you might have a nice picture of Sanguinius on your 40k terrain, maybe not quite so much in the Necromunda. Um, but if, especially if your gang is corridor based, why not make some corridor related terrain? I have done a video on how I make my candles, so yeah, you could definitely have some candles in there. But today I'll be making a bookcase, so yeah, these things are fantastic. You could just Fill them up with skulls, um, like a little, like a little bookcase, but put skulls in it, or candles, or combination of skulls, candles, books, scrolls, even. The possibilities are endless. I love Necromunda. I really, really do. So after you keep this piece here, we need to have some thin-ish um, plastic art and bridge between this piece and this piece. So question is how deep do you want your bookcase so I'm going to make it a fairly deep bookcase and I've already cut out some nice strips to stick on the back with some plasti glue so you can stick it directly onto the back or you can rig it up first with some cardboard making some templates so you know exactly how much to cut without wasting anything but my chosen method of assembly to get the piece you've cut out and bend it and glue it like so. So for this you'll need a decent plastic glue. Make sure this edge is fairly smooth and clean and uh, free from any bits that you may have left on the cutting out. So if any rigid bits are sticking out, like for example you can see the tip there isn't completely smooth Punch it with a knife, give it a little sand. Obviously the tighter the gap, the better the bond, the better the illusion. So, plastic glue ahoy hoy. And do one edge at a time. So try not to get it on the face, doesn't matter if you get it on the back too much. Push it like so. Let it bond for a little bit. Plastic glue should go off fairly fast. Obviously not as fast as super glue, but it really does give a stronger blonde. Blonde? A stronger blonde. It really does give a stronger blonde. 
as it starts gluing. Bend the edge around. Okay, so you should have something like this. And it doesn't matter if it's too perfect on the outside edges, because you won't see that once it's stuck inside, like so. And you can always make yourself a few shelves. So whatever you wanted to decorate this with, you don't have to make books. You can make whatever you want. Like I said, you can have head to toe in skulls if you want to. Uh, I'm going to make a regular shelf, which I've measured and pre-cut earlier, and a busted shelf. So I will stick those in there nicely. Uh, when my big fat fingers aren't good enough, I'm going to be using some tweezers. That on there is a mixture of blood and riser rust for when I use sponge work, um, despite what you think that may be. So I'm going to stick that on there with a little bit of the trusty plastic glue. And let's see what we can do. Okay, so that's what it looks like at the moment. So there's my busted shelf at the top and a regular shelf at the bottom. You can see it goes back fairly far. And I'm going to start making some books. So what I'm using is different thicknesses of plastic card, and you can use any other product if you want to. Uh, you could get bits of paper and fold it up so it looks like a multi-leafed book rather than actually using plastic card. But what I'm going to do is get a different thickness of plastic card, things like this, and score it so it actually makes it look like pages. So never chuck anything away. So this is high density plastic card, real, real thick. From a distance, it looks like um, foam core, but it is super, super, super tough. Um, that stuff I actually cut with an angle grinder <laughs> rather than messing around with a knife. But once slivers are cut off, it's really easy and manageable. Uh, other plastic card thicknesses, like this, the same thickness is what I've used for the shelf. I also use for books as well. So I want really weighty tomes as well as regular books. So that's what I'm gonna use for the pages. Now to wrap the pages, I'm gonna use a thinner plastic card, hardly noticeable, for the thickness of the book. So you have to think of the scale. So obviously Necromunda is 28 mil, 32 mil, things like that. Um, but if you've got a bigger scale game, obviously thicker plastic card or like I said, multiple folding of paper, or you could use, um, let's think, balsa wood. It's really easy to sand. You can get quite a smooth finish. Balsa wood would look more like pages, I suppose, as well. But for me personally, in this video, I am using a plastic card. So I'm going to cut my page thicknesses. So there's one lot there, and I'm going to start cutting the size of my book. And the same with this one here. Now I'm not going to have all my books the same thickness because this is Necromunda. Nothing's organized. I'm very surprised there's even a library in Necromunda. So when you have your tiny little book of well, your pages effectively, measure about a millimeter in every direction bigger for the book like that. And when you stick it on bend it around and stick the top. So it's important not to cut it, it's to bend it around. So I'll start sticking books like this when the glue is dry. I'll then start bending and closing the books. So you should be ending up with something that looks like this. So there's a thick old tomb, tome even, tomb? Yeah, <laughs> okay, sure, why not? And some skinny books. Slightly thicker book, and then I'm going to start gluing them on my shelves. So, a pair of tweezers once again, because I am cack handed, and I have a little skull to stick on one of the books, possibly on the top shelf. So, here goes. So, trusty bit of plastic glue just in there, and stick in my thick book at the bottom case because you know weight limit and all that and there you have the final piece a small library um, god knows what would be in the books in Necromunda but there you go 
uh, maybe recipe guides on how to eat your fellow man. Um, but basically, that's it. Um, really simple, really easy to do. Takes a couple hours max. Just a casual bit of modelling, just to spice up your zone mortalis pillars. Just listen to a podcast or something, and just casually hobby away one evening. Really just adds a little something extra. And like I said, you don't have to use books. You could use chunks of meat. Uh, you could have a stained glass window in there, a massive pile of skulls, a load of candles. Hell, um, even a person imprisoned in there uh, as a cell. You name it. Uh, yeah, possibilities are endless. And that's exactly why I love Necromunda. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my ramblings on, especially at the beginning. And uh, stay safe, you wonderful people. See you in the next video.